establish that in the law. Okay. Now, one of the um, changes has been how perpetrators have been defined. Before the changes in the law, a perpetrator of child abuse, and again, we're not looking at the criminal code, we're not thinking about you know, the bad guys, we're not thinking about the police investigations, any of that today, we're thinking about the child welfare system, CPS system. A, for someone to be a perpetrator of child abuse, historically, they had to be a member of the child's household or someone in a caretaking role. Now, we did an analysis of the Jerry Sandusky case Jerry Sandusky was not a perpetrator according to the law. He wasn't a member of the household and he wasn't in a caretaking role. So all of the you know, criticism about CPS not responding, they couldn't because he wasn't in that role. So the, they've refined and changed the definition to be much broader, to really encompass situations so that many more cases can fall under the purview of, of CPS. What also happened is when child welfare workers, when CPS workers went to investigate reports, they'd go out and investigate reports, and they couldn't figure out who did it. They saw that the child was abused. They didn't know if it was mom's boyfriend. They didn't know if it was the uncle. They didn't know if it was some friend who lived down the street. So many counties, and then this was something people, the procedure of informal policies differ county to county, they wouldn't substantiate or they couldn't have substantiate the report because they couldn't substantiate that the perpetrator fell under the definition of child abuse. You would have this with a child who was hospitalized with abusive head trauma. Very clear the child had been abused. But if they didn't know who did it, they couldn't substantiate. That's horrible. I mean, that's just really completely unacceptable. So they changed the definition to broaden it. So the definition now includes a perpetrator or parents of any age. It includes a spouse, a paramour, or former spouse or paramour of the child's parent. A person 14 years or older, as I earlier mentioned, who's responsible for the child's welfare, including any person who has direct or regular contact with the child, this is again Sandusky influence, through any program, activity, service, or service sponsored for a school, for-profit or religious or other nonprofit organizations such as camps, athletic programs, enrichment programs, or troops, clubs, or similar organizations. So they really try to be very comprehensive. It also includes school, school employees and independent contractors. One of the bills that changed is there was a special carve-out for schools, and they had their own rules separate from everyone else. And there, um, when we provided our testimony, there had only been 16 cases substantiated under that special school statute in the entire Commonwealth in the year before. I said, you know, it doesn't make sense that school employees should be held to a different standard or a different process than everyone else. So one of the laws that passed eliminated that special carve-out. So, so now schools and school employees are included with the rest of us as mandated reporters. Um, a perpetrator living in the same home, home as a child must be 14 years old or older, such as the 13-year-old exception that I mentioned. And it also includes individuals 18 years or older not residing in the same household um, and related to the child within third, third degree of blood, marriage, or adoption. So now if grandpa molests little Susie and isn't living in the home, grandpa's a perpetrator and this is now a case. So why is it important to broaden the definition? Well, if you look back to the Sandusky case, none of these victims would have been eligible for services because they, they weren't involved in the child welfare system. With a vast array of services, everything from looking, doing medical exams, providing evidence-based treatment, any of those services are not available if someone's not involved in the child welfare system. The child welfare system has lots of services available for families, so it's very, very important for victims to have access to that. It also gives you the opportunity to look at what's happening in the household on a broader scale. So if grandpa's molesting Susie, do you want to maybe look and see what's happening with his other grandchildren he's visiting and babysitting? It gives you an opportunity to really um, be more effective and more comprehensive.
So perpetrate that was acts of abuse. So and we'll talk a bit more what acts of abuse are. This is perpetrated for failure to act. Again, parents of any age, including the spouse, paramour, former spouse or paramour of the child's parent. And they now raise the law from the from the age of 14 to 18 as it relates to persons responsible for the child's welfare, persons residing in the same home as the child. And it ensures that siblings and other minors who could not be perpetrators of abuse by commission, in other words, by doing something, actually hitting a child, are not considered perpetrators by failing to protect a child from someone else. You know, it was just, it was a mixed in. So they try to look at consistencies in the law. Um, and also so they're not held responsible for the acts of adults. You know, you don't want children being held responsible for acts of adults, which is not appropriate. Um, part of what the, the task force did is they looked at the criminal code and looked at all the juvenile code, looked at, and made sure that when they changed one area, they changed another, so there was consistency in the law, so everything kind of matched up. Okay. This is the legal definition of a school. Another thing I'm required to tell you. But they have expanded the legal definition of a school. It's a facility providing elementary, secondary,